I gotta come up with a better intro. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jared. For those of you that are subscribed, you may have noticed that I've changed the channel title. Let me explain. So we are getting down to the bitter end here of getting the boat finished. We all know boats are never finished, but getting it totally usable, I guess I should say. That being said, it's towards the end of the season already and things are starting to wind down. So I don't want to just kind of cut off for the winter because I don't really have anything else to do to the boat. And I got a whole bunch of other stuff going on around the house, DIY projects, uh, construction type stuff. So I thought maybe you guys might be a little bit interested in that. So I'm going to start trying out some of those videos on the channel here, kind of down the road. So with that being said, Mad Props Boat Works kind of makes it sound like, okay, he does boats. Well, I do, but with this other stuff coming down the road, it kind of made sense to make the channel a little bit more generic. Doesn't sound like the best word, but... So, I changed the name to Mad Props Makes. So, I don't know if I like it. It's the first thing I came up with, so we're just going to roll with it. Anyway, for those of you that have tuned into this video, you probably have a problem with your ignition system. So did I. So this all started back, I'm recording this kind of later, but um, I got the motor back in the boat and kind of tested everything out on the muffs in the driveway, got everything running, kind of tweaked and adjusted roughly, and everything sounded okay. So I was like, great, check that one off the list. Motor's in, running good, move on to the next stuff. Then a couple weeks had passed, I was working on the boat, doing other stuff, and I went to start up the boat again because I forget what it was. I needed to get the motor running to do... So oh, I remember. I was going to change the oil. So I wanted to get the motor warmed up. And it would not start. It's like, what the heck? It just ran. Like, the starter was cranking over, but it just would not fire. So I went down the typical list of, all right, so have spark. Checked. Wasn't getting spark. It's like, all right, that's weird. Maybe I'm just... It, it was bright out. I was like, maybe I'm not seeing it. So just double-checked. Tried the starter fluid. Nothing. I pumped the throttle linkage, I was getting fuel through the accelerator pump, so I was like, well, it's getting fuel, at least some. Huh. So I kind of investigated the spark thing a little bit more, and my boat had Thunderbolt 5 ignition for Mercruiser, and Thunderbolt 4 is basically the same. 5 has a little bit better technology built into the ignition module, and some Thunderbolt 5 even has a knock sensor. Mine does not. There's a couple versions, one with, one without. So the first thing I did is broke out the troubleshooting list um, from my manual, from my manual. Get with these, best money ever spent. So started down at the top, or down, started up at the top of the list, worked my way down, ended up at ignition module. Now I had read over and over again how bulletproof the Thunderbolt ignition system is. Okay, so. That seems weird. I know it's not the coil. If you go on iBoats and say, I have a bad coil, they're gonna say, no you don't, because they pretty much never go bad. So I went through it again, tried everything on the list, still ended up at bad ignition module. It's like, all right, I guess I have a bad ignition module. I guess anything can go bad, so hop on Google, find the part number, They're like $600. Kidding me? It's more than I paid for the boat. Long story short, found out that there's this thing called a Delco EST ignition. <clears throat> so it's basically a marinized version of what was on Chevy vehicles. Um, their coil, their distributor, and ignition sensor, and all that stuff, but made for the marine environment so it's safe. It's um, Coast Guard approved or SAE J117, I forget the numbers, but. It's like, I don't even know, it was like 200 bucks or something for the entire, maybe 300 bucks for the entire ignition system, which comes with a new coil, new distributor with sensor, cap, wires, um, all the wiring you need for the harness to adapt to it. So that was a no brainer. The other benefit is if any of those parts do go bad, the aftermarket parts are significantly cheaper. So all that to be said, this video is gonna be about how to install that Delco EST system in a Mercruiser application for Thunderbolt 4 or 5. It's probably all about the same. So let's get into it. 
So in my situation, since I had already tested the module and taken the coil out and things like that, I didn't have to undo it, but point is here is you basically just want to undo all the connections coming from the distributor and the module. So the main plug as well as the coil wires and the sensor wires that go to the distributor sensor. Then we need to remove the distributor cap and set it aside. And at this point, this is one of the most important things, is you want to make note of where the rotor on the distributor is actually pointing. So in my case, I actually cranked the engine slightly to point the rotor towards something that was easily marked. The original place it was pointing, there was really nothing that I could make a mark on to, to keep track of it. So in this case, I just rotated it and it ended up almost exactly at the stud on the carburetor. And you can see I'm actually also making a mark on the intake manifold, just scratching it with the screwdriver. Then we need to just remove this bolt that holds the distributor clamp down tight that keeps the distributor in and also from rotating. They also make a special wrench for this. It makes it a little bit easier, but once it's out, we then need to remove the distributor. And take note of this, when you lift up on it, the rotor actually will rotate about 45 degrees or an eighth of a turn. So you want to take note that that's going to happen when you install the new distributor. So you have to offset it by this this eighth turn or 45 degrees before you put the new one in. Now I'm just comparing the old with the new to make sure that the lengths of everything are the same and the gears look the same. And here is where I ran into a little bit of an issue, because I had never done this before on one of these Mercruiser engines. On the bottom of the distributor, there's actually a slot that goes into the oil pump shaft, which is down in the engine. And the new one versus the old one was not aligned identically with the rotor, if that makes sense. So if I had the rotor lined up to match where the old one was, the oil pump slot was not actually lining up. So to fix that, I took a long flat blade screwdriver, put it down in the hole into the oil pump shaft, and rotated it so it would line up with the new distributor. So then when we go to install the new one, with the rotor offset about that eighth of a turn, when we go to push it in the whole way, you'll actually see it lines up right back with that stud on the carburetor and my initial mark. Now if this is slightly off, it's okay you can rotate the distributor a bit to adjust for the timing. But if it's off a good bit, you'll want to take it back out and turn it a tooth and reinstall it till you get it close. And we're just gonna put the bolt back in the distributor clamp, just loosely now though, so we can adjust it later. And then it's time to undo all the new plug wires that came with this kit, and I'm sorting them long to short and installing them on the new distributor cap. So, so for cylinders one and two would have the longest wires, three and four shorter and so on. And then we're just gonna install the new distributor cap on the new distributor, making sure that um, everything's oriented in the right orientation. And now comes the super tedious process, which is probably the worst part of the whole thing, which is installing the plug wires on these spark plugs. It's not a lot of room to crawl around here to get to them, but it's not too bad. And we're gonna install the new wiring harness that goes from the distributor to the coil. So I plug the one end into the distributor and let the other one hang loose while I am now mounting the coil. You can put this anywhere you want, but just keep in mind that the wires aren't super long, so you'll have to make sure everything can reach. I chose to mount mine back here on the, the back of the boat. I wanted to keep it off of the motor itself to keep down vibration um, and also to keep it out out of the way of water kind of dripping down off of the sun deck so it's kind of protected here. So just mount that with a couple of stainless steel screws and then it's time to plug the other end of that harness into the plug on the coil and then run the coil plug wire from the coil to the distributor center post. So now the super fun part of actually doing all the wiring. See if I can summarize this here. I apologize, the, the view isn't the best. It's kind of hard to get a camera in tight here while you're working around these wires. They're not real long. But, um, to summarize, you basically want to take the purple wire and the gray wire that used to run to the distributor. 
In my case, one of the gray wire, or the gray wire actually had two coming off of that post. One went to the plug to the ignition module and the other one goes to the tachometer. You want to take the one that goes to the tachometer. The other one, there's only one purple wire in my case. So basically we're going to splice those into the new harness that comes with the kit. You can see here with the long grain purple wire. So I'm just putting some heat shrink connectors on there and then sliding a big piece of heat shrink over the entire thing to make sure it's nice and waterproof. When we're done with that, we just plug that into the other spot on the distributor, or the new coil. Once that's done, it was time to try and fire it up and see how it worked. And I guess I got pretty lucky here because it actually fired up and ran really smooth without even adjusting the distributor. So I guess that mark I made was actually pretty close. And after that, we're going to shut it down. Well, not shut it down, we're going to actually let it idle for a while and get up to operating temperature so we can check the timing. Now on this particular engine, I believe we want about 27 degrees total timing, but I don't have an a, a total, or an advanced timing light. But I'm putting on this connector here that comes with the kit that allows you to put the coil or the distributor into it um, base timing mode. And in this mode, you actually hook up the positive wire to the plug that goes into the coil. And then when you check your timing, again, for this particular engine, which is a 5.7 liter, we're looking for 8 degrees base timing. Now, again, you want this to ideally be at operating temperature, um, at idle, which really should be in the water in gear, but obviously you can't do that here. So I got it close, and I'll double check this once I get the boat in the water. Now, once everything looked pretty good on the timing, I tightened down the distributor and then moved on to this step, which is actually wiring up the neutral safety switch. Um, without getting into too much detail, the neutral safety switch, um, basically what it does is when you shift out, out of gear, um, when the boat's in the water, it actually will cut spark for a, a couple of milliseconds to actually take the load off of the drive when you're actually shifting out of gear. Otherwise, the, the dog in the gear will not actually want to come out. So again, it just takes the load off of it, which allows the boat to actually come out of gear. If you don't have this wired up, you'll actually have trouble and maybe not even be able to get the boat out of gear when you're in the water, which is not a good situation. So one thing worth noting here is this works the opposite of the old Thunderbolt system. The Thunderbolt system would actually ground out this distributor module to cut spark. In this case, you actually want to supply 12 volts to kill the spark. So what I did is actually took one of the purple wires coming out of the old plug to the module and used that as a key con or a switch controlled 12 volts. Ran it through the neutral safety switch which is mounted to the uh, starboard side riser and then ran the other wire coming back out of the neutral safety switch into the harness. So that way when you take it out of gear it actually will close that switch and then send 12 volts to the module killing spark just for this few milliseconds just to work just like the factory one. Um, I know this is a little bit confusing but the wiring diagram that comes with the kit makes it pretty clear. Alright guys, that is going to do it for this one. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. I know I wish there was something like this when I was doing it, but that being said, it was still pretty straightforward. The only part that was a little bit confusing for me was how the neutral safety, I keep saying neutral safety switch, the shift cutout switch got wired. And in addition to that, the documentation that came with the kit that I bought was pretty good. And if you Google it, there's all kinds of diagrams out there for these kits. There's a lot of manufacturers that make this kit but they're all basically exactly the same thing. So just search around and try and find the wiring di diagram that makes the most sense to you and just go with that one because they're basically all the same. All right, guys, thanks for checking this one out, and I guess we'll see you in the next one. See you.